Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Memorial Championship third round action. This is your lead card as they've moved over to the Vista del Camino course. Unfortunately, Nate Perkins is not going to be joining. That's just me chasing a stick around. Nate is off to Waco. He asked if I could handle this solo. I said, yeah, I got this. You travel safely and thanks for the insights over the last couple of rounds. Can't say enough about him. As we're looking at hole number one, a par three, 285 feet, pretty straightforward. The only daunting part of this hole is that you must make it through this triple mando. If you miss it high, left, or right, you'll be assessed a penalty and you have to re -tee. And maybe the sigh from Macbeth says it all. Off the mark. And a similar mistake out of Barella. His, of course, getting caught up, though. You can see with the flanner up in the top right. Looks like a little bit of a tailwind here. And right off the bat, I'll go ahead and address it after we see the shot by Hamas. If you're new to seeing golf at Vista del Camino, they on most holes, give you the option to tee to one of the sides of the tee pad. The tee pads sometimes are very slick, even though there's some form of concrete or whatever they are. But you see that little tiny whisker there as we're watching Aaron Gossage go just deep of the pin with the forehand. That whisker says that they can go up into that point. Sometimes it's on the left of the tee, sometimes it's on the right, but that is completely legal and it is only on the holes where it's deemed with that whisker, so to speak. And AB, <laughs> thunderous applause. That's gonna be a par save. Macbeth as well now looking at a par. Coming in today with a six stroke advantage over Barella. Eight over Hamas and well, one less now to Aaron, but still has an eight stroke advantage. Birdie for Hamas, closes the gap by one. A.B. and Paul talking about the confidence coming in from uh, some of the spectators over there at Dukes. I'm going to take a look at hole two, 369 feet. Seems so much like this was just a standard backhand, maybe something low that goes to the right of the tree there on your right side, and then dips maybe even around the back of that secondary tree. However, after watching plenty of Shelly Sharp coverage, you notice that there's a lot of players that have no problem going with the forehand up the left side and then playing it from left to right. Hamas goes with the backhand though. And if that stays clean, that'll give him a putt from about circle's edge, a little outside of there. Good shot for Adam. I believe this is the first time I've had Aaron on the channel. He's certainly come up throughout the last few years and he throws a mile and pots really well, hence why he's here on the lead card. Almost gets a little jumper. And yes, if you're wondering if you recognize the name, he is related 
to Goose Gossage, the MLB pitcher. Macbeth a little light with that. And this is the play that we'll likely see from AB on both two and three. Gets over on his destroyer. And then it fights back, leaving him almost the same distance as Macbeth. And we haven't seen a whole lot of missed putts out of Macbeth in the first two rounds, hence him sitting at 28 under in 37 holes. So AB is going to follow Macbeth with back to back pars here to start the round. There's a lot of birdies to be had, especially in the first five or six holes on this course. Hole seven is the easiest one on the course. So if somebody gets off to a hot start, they could certainly start closing that gap, even though Macbeth started with such a significant lead. And only one other time in this tournament have we seen Macbeth get back-to-back -back pars, and now he's doing it here to start this third round. and my disc in a box proudly sponsoring and supporting us. Well, that that's my company, but if you need to ship discs safely and securely in a box, reach out to me. I can set you up with a hundred case carton. Hole three, 360 feet, plays very similar to what we just saw from hole two. Of course, the wall on the high right side is out of bounds. Also, there is a little culvert area that is out of bounds. That's something that's come about in the last couple of years as they've played it that way. Shouldn't be a problem for our MPO competitors. And nor should this drive be a problem. Nice shot by Hamas. If you've already consumed the FPO coverage, I hope you have, you will realize there's just a handful of holes that MPO players will have a longer tee than the FPO players and the first place that that happens isn't until hole number nine. Aaron's got the forehand dialed in. That should be back-to-back -back birdies there. Beth a little light. We'll have to see if that tree actually comes into play from where he is. A great gallery. Everybody panning to watch. And park job for Anthony Barella. And the tree certainly does come into play. Macbeth going to a knee. And this is outside the circle. This is close to 38, maybe 40 feet. Unbelievable. Catches a little cabbage. Not to be denied. Macbeth picks up his first birdie of the round. Ham is trying to go three for three on his start. And this has all the makings for a star frame. Oh, 
And Aaron also goes three for three to get started. Man, let's take a break. Maybe some jerky? I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. When I have Double G's Craft Jerky and I pull it out of my bag during a round, the first thing anyone asks is, is that Double G's Craft Jerky? And I always bring the big bag because I know I'm going to have to share it. I'm a big fan of beef jerky and I have to say that Double G Beef Jerky is absolutely my favorite I've ever found. I'm always looking forward to digging my hand in my next bag of Double G Craft Jerky. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. Big shout out, Double G, Ted, and crew. So amazing to work with, and I'm going to pass some of that love on to you guys. I've got jerky to give away as well, so <laughs> what I don't eat, I can share with you guys. As we're here on four, 381 feet, usually the play will be wide to the right, trying to get around one of the taller trees. Just like we're seeing from Hamas, you got to make sure it's wide enough and have it swing back. And that's exactly what he's done. Just about circle's edge. Aaron's going to keep riding the forehand train here. And that's going to be out of bounds. We have a look to save the par possibly from there with the penalty stroke. Let's see if Macbeth can bring this one in tight enough. If you're playing close attention. Now we've seen back to back short shots. In fact, I think we've seen three of them, and hole one was just flat out off the mark. Of course, that was short, but. Three out of the first four drives here have been short by Macbeth. Oh, and that is close to the line. It looks like it's touching it. Oh, no, it's not. It's outside of it. So that's going to be out of bounds and an opportunity to save the par for Barella. Interesting. He's been short on three drives, but high on two putts. So Macbeth not bringing what we saw during rounds one and two. Here's Barella to save the par. That's right side corner pocket. No harm, no foul there. Full four played at .05 above par. Very interesting that it played that difficult for our MPO field. <laughs> and Aaron doing the best he can after the OB stroke. He'll remain three down for the round. I, I, I guess I should take back that shock that I just had a moment ago. We see four pars by our lead card. So to see that this hole played 3.05 on the day, maybe not so crazy. I think that's all due to the OB that now surrounds the basket. Full five, 340 feet. This one's pretty straightforward. There's a mando tree on the left that we're about to pass, so you have to go to the right of that. And then there's a mando tree on the right in which you have to pass to the left. The one danger here, assuming you've made both mandos, is going deep and finding yourself past those two trees. If you do that, I guarantee they will mess with your putting stance or lane or alley to the basket and this looks great coming in by Hamas and almost perfect the flex over stable forehand that's not a shot we commonly see <laughs> park job Aaron is on fire this hole played 2.84 on the day. Third easiest hole relative to par. Ooh. 
short and left for Macbeth. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He might have to straddle out a little bit to the left, but that tree will for sure come into play to this elevated basket for Barella. And that was nowhere near going in. The wind might have taken it, but that definitely looked off for Macbeth. Here's Barella. And again, you see him trying to keep it underneath that tree branch, so he had to really put a little bit more on it and stab at it. And look at the comeback putt. The tree, less of a factor, but now you have the gallery behind you. It's going to be a three putt by Anthony Borelli. He's going to fall one back of Macbeth. You see right now, AB and Hammis are tied coming into this hole. Aaron is all but parked. That's a solid hit. I know some have commented saying it feels like you see Anthony and Adam on just about all coverage in Arizona, and there's a reason for that. They're the two best players in the state. Adam comes down here late winter, early spring. Hangs out for a few months. We usually see them at the Shelly Sharp and at the Maricopa event. Each of them picked up a win when I was down here early, earlier in the year. AB getting one as well as Adam. So certainly contenders anytime we see play in Arizona. They're going to move over to hole number six. I've got DG coin shirts available for sale if you need to pick one up. This is a par four, the first one. 783 feet and Zach has been incredible with getting us some drone previews but he's not necessarily local and uh, he came in on the shorter basket but this is still incredibly significant because that spot and maybe 50 feet past it is just about your landing zone so although you have about 300 feet to go from there that preview is still helpful in telling you where you'd like to land and that is well off the mark on the left side. That's smashed. I just really don't have any better words for it. That's a great drive. Also in great position to set him up for his second shot. Also good position, but you see how much farther up that Aaron was as opposed to Macbeth. Forehand turns over, but it's going to fight back. That is an OB line right there, and that's actually hole 14. So hole 6 and hole 14 parallel one another going in opposite directions. So keep that in mind for the back nine. If you carry into the other fairway, that's going to be out of bounds. Hammis will be on the left side with an open look at the basket for the birdie. And Macbeth's approach is short. We'll see if that tree comes into play. If so, because of the elevated basket yet again, it makes it really difficult to be aggressive on the putt. That low ceiling. And you see with the skill level of Anthony or Aaron here, for instance, just the ability to step up to a nearly 800-foot hole, and you're going to 
go forehand, forehand at it. Plays the skip. Reading the wind. Everything great about that shot. Aaron really bringing his A game today. And exactly what I thought, that ceiling preventing Macbeth there from being able to give it a regular run. And Aaron, just a little bit short. You hear the wind picking up considerably. That's the first time Aaron's putter is going to hit the ground. Hole six played as the third most difficult hole on the course. It averaged 4.55, so nearly more than a half a stroke above par. Also keep in mind, there's a cut to the fourth day, so you need to be in the top 40%. Clearly none of these players are in jeopardy of that. And AB is going to pick up another stroke. That's going to, I should say, negate the bogey from the previous hole. He's still six back of Macbeth. Currently tied for third with Aaron. So, albeit disappointing they didn't get the birdie, they're probably not realizing, hey, this hole played a half stroke over par for the rest of the field so really a par is not devastating by any means and they've got a long walk over to hole seven well okay maybe it's not so long we're already there 645 feet this traditionally plays as one of the easiest holes on the course it's a par four you do some quick math even a 400 foot drive leaves you with 245 You'll play to the elevated pin, but if you're a righty backhand thrower, which the majority of the world is, this sets up pretty well for you. <laughs> Unreal. He is pushing all the way up to the chase card. Anything near that sidewalk is a great drive. Over it is next level. <laughs> that was awesome. And that bites back and, well, I guess the gallery makes it clear. It finds inbounds. Bart Simpson's in the gallery? <laughs> He's not wrong, though. Wow. That, that is one of the longest air shots I've ever seen on this hole. I've been coming here a lot of years. That might be one of the longest air shots, one of the closest to the basket I've ever seen. And... That won't be any problems for Macbeth on the left side. He has a little bit of a mando to get around, but at that point, it's just a little chip shot. Adam's a little demanding, but I guess it pays off. If your disc listens, I guess you can get bossy with it. So that's what I'd love for you to leave in the comments. As, oh, AB leaves it a little bit short. Oh, the sidewalk here, not out of bounds. You see the Mando tree. This is unreal. I cannot believe how close he is. 
Anyway, leave that in the comments. That's what I want to know. What two discs would you likely be throwing? Assuming you throw a drive. As Macbeth is in for the birdie. And then maybe it's an approach. Maybe it's another drive. I don't know how good you are. But what two discs are you throwing on this particular hole? Put that in the comments. There's been many events where I've seen this play as the single easiest hole statistically. Today, it played as the fifth easiest, so not quite the gimme that it typically has been for our MPO division, but still on the easier side. And that's a star frame. Nice work, gentlemen. One of Adam's sponsors and partners in Resistance Discs and Jeff and the crew have been so kind and gracious in supporting coverage that I've been putting out here in Arizona this weekend and others, so I really appreciate it. You head over to resistancedisc.com, put in the code DGGUY. I think you're going to get yourself some free shipping on anything over $30. And easily the most pictured hole here at Vista del Camino. You see it at 360 feet. You're not trying to go left of that tree, but it works out for AB. Okay, you're definitely not trying to hit the tree either, but that worked. That looked like a mid, possibly a zone. Coming from Aaron. You can go out of bounds if you go deep of this basket. The sidewalk back there is OB. Of course, the water's OB, but the sidewalk is also OB. Paul puts too much on it. And he's going to check up and stay in bounds, but... He's going to have the longest putt of the group. I, I was honestly just thinking that, so. I'm also thinking, besides Resistance, who I just mentioned, all the other incredible sponsors and supporters... This coverage wouldn't be possible without you, along with my Patreon supporters. So I have to get it in. You guys may be sick of shout-outs, but this coverage truly wouldn't be possible without the likes of Patreon and a number of other sponsors that stepped up. Hammers for birdie. Down it. Morello trying to separate himself from Aaron here. Pulling to solo third. Perfect. Hope you guys have been enjoying the coverage. I know I thanked all the sponsors, but I've got one of the largest crews ever to be here helping me out this week. They're doing all the real work. I just get in front of a mic and babble. So thank you to all of my crew and the guys running around capturing this, along with Sandy Point Resort, my favorite place in all of disc golf. Hole 9, 482 feet, so difficult to access. You've got the OB sidewalk on the right, and then you, of course, have the... <laughs> water on the left I can't say it enough this is absolutely a bonus birdie
AB going way big. <laughs> yes, AB sticks the landing on the dance floor for the elusive birdie opportunity. No surprise, this plays as the second most difficult hole on the course today. And not only is he going to get the penalty stroke, but he's definitely not retrieving that one. Playing the win. That's a huge pull by Aaron. I like it. Oh, it gets the skip. Just finish in. And it does also right there. He's outside the gym doors looking onto the dance floor. I don't know if that's an eighth grade dance or seventh grade. Oh man, those were awkward years, weren't they? All right, here's Macbeth. That's also the high hyzer. Oh, and he finds the water. Both him and Hamas have similar lies to where they were last in bounds, and now maybe you're seeing why this is playing as the most difficult hole on the course. A little frustration from our leader. That lead continues to close because guys like Aaron here lighting it up. Doesn't convert. I hear birthday cake. I hear birthday birdies. Anthony Barella, the only competitor in the entire division to take the birdie. Can I steal? Can I officially steal Ian Anderson's line? Strokes on folks. Ian, I'll send you the royalty check. We're going to start to close it out, and things have been interesting for sure. Macbeth struggling here in the front nine. Adam trying to make a charge, but he's going to get slowed down with the bogey there. Thank you guys for watching. Hope that you're enjoying all this crazy coverage at the Memorial. We've got tons of FPO coverage every single day. That's been out. We're getting bonus MP40 coverage for the last couple of rounds. And I couldn't do it without all of you watching. Like, share, subscribe. Macbeth, a very, very slow front nine, just one under. And the lead is just three.